assalamu alaikum and good afternoon from malaysia wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi for joining our 21st monthly webinar we have now more than 1600 members from 20 countries the learning outcome for today's webinar after attending this webinar the participants will be able to explain the concept of continuous assessment explain the rationale for preparing a logbook and its usage prepare a comprehensive logbook appropriate for the level of the students ensure the authenticity of the logbook and use a logbook for its stated purpose that is the continuous assessment let us begin with by clearing our concepts about continuous assessment based on its purpose the assessment can be divided into three categories number one assessment for learning which is formative assessment and is meant to improve the knowledge of students by giving them feedback and this assessment is conducted periodically assessment of learning is summative assessment and is meant to make a decision about the progression of the student to the next level of training and it is conducted at the end of the course assessment as learning or continuous assessment is meant to improve the skills and knowledge and attitude and professionalism of the students and is conducted continuously formative assessment is to monitor students learning for providing feedback based on this feedback the students can address the areas of concern it also identify the gaps in teachers instructions based on this information the teachers can improve on their instructions and teaching approaches summative assessment is aimed at assessing the extent to which the most important outcomes have been achieved at the end of the instruction based on this assessment student may or may not be promoted to the next level of training it also assesses the effectiveness of teaching learning activities and based on this assessment changes may be instituted in the curriculum the other types of assessment based on criteria include norm referenced and criterion reference and based on its scope the programmatic assessment workplace based assessment 360 degree assessment continuous assessment we will address four important questions about it what is continuous assessment why continuous assessment is needed what are the components of continuous assessment and how continuous assessment can be used the first question what is continuous assessment continuous assessment is an approach that captures the full range of learners performance and it helps teachers to understand their learners plan and monitor instructions and establish a viable classroom culture many medical schools and other educational systems all over the world have adopted this approach in assessing learners achievements in many different subject areas continuous assessment of learners progress could be defined as a mechanism whereby the final grading of learners in cognitive affective and psychomotor domains of learning systematically takes account of all their performances during a given period of training continuous assessment is a regular assessment of the learning performance for a regular feedback 
Its purpose is to monitor the academic, personal, and professional development, growth of the students, to help them improve in all aspects of professionalism. It is a criterion based and its scope is 360 degree assessment that is both in workplace uh, and as well as in classroom. This is conducted by the supervisors with the help of the peers, academic and non-academic staff members and even uh, patients. Continuous assessment can take various forms depending on the final objective and competencies. For example, regular observation of practical skills or attitudes, regular feedback on portfolio presentations, assignments, regular assessment of verbal language skills, regular testing of insight into theoretical concepts. Continuous assessment can take place within various types of contact movements, for example, during practical sessions, workshops, and lectures. The assessment task can verify which developmental process the students are going through. The second question, why we need continuous assessment? Annual examinations mainly assess factual recall and may not cover all aspects of learning, especially at higher cognitive and attitudinal level. For example, leadership skills, entrepreneurship skills, or professionalism. Annual examinations cover only a small segment of assessment in a short time and many factors may influence the outcome. For example, recently, the examinations conducted during COVID-19 epidemic were compromised to some extent. On the other hand, continuous assessment over extended period of time covers many areas which otherwise cannot be assessed in annual examinations. The learning outcomes assessed during continuous assessment are different than the learning outcomes assessed in annual examinations. Here are some examples of components of continuous assessment in clinical years. Professionalism, which includes teamwork, punctuality, communication skills, enthusiasm, self-presentation, problem solving, leadership skills, entrepreneurship, etc. Case presentations during BST. It also includes clinical procedures, whether they are performed, assisted, and observed. Cases clocked. Completed tasks within the given time. For example, research projects, community projects, or assignments. And portfolios. The examples of continuous assessment in preclinical years include professionalism, completed tasks within the given time, like research projects, community projects and assignment, portfolios, performance during small group sessions like problem-based learning uh, sessions, peer assessment, uh, presentations, and self-directed learning and directed self-learning. The process of continuous assessment during a posting or a module is conducted as data about the student is recorded by supervisors and feedback on performance is given continuously. A written work can be submitted once after feedback. Student is given feedback and an opportunity to improve if student makes an other attempt, which mark should be included? That is the question which is often asked. The faculty can decide to maintain the original marks or to use the marks of the improved assessment 
or take the average of the two marks. There are six steps to continuous improvement of student learning. It starts with identification of goals or general learning outcomes, then specific learning outcomes, identifying the strategies, applying the strategies, analyzing the results and making changes uh, accordingly. The teacher's role in student development can be divided into three domains, professional knowledge, professional practice, and professional engagement. It is in professional practice, the teachers are expected to assess the students continuously, provide feedback, and report on student learning. Continuous assessment should be practiced routinely and has a definite purpose. There is no anxiety involved in this because this is not the final assessment. It helps in the engagement of students. It helps students to realize their responsibility. It helps in self-awareness, helps in refining the teaching and achieving the mastery. Tools used by supervisor for continuous assessment include logbooks, portfolios, assignments, project reports, extracurricular activities, 360 degree uh, assessment, mini CX, and the example uh, in case of professional component, it is assessed as satisfactory and unsatisfactory rather than giving marks. For example, satisfactory attendance consistently and punctuality, demonstrated interest and enthusiasm in his or her work, demonstrated an ability to form good working relationships with members of the practice team, completed required tasks. Supervisor can recommend a distinction based on the demonstrated evidence of wider reading and research into the issues relevant to the subject which broadened prospective of group and facilitated their learning, means that student work has helped the whole group in improving uh, their professionalism. Next, uses of continuous assessment. There are three options. Number one, continuous improvement of learning performance. It is mainly for feedback, and planning for remedial steps. Number two, apart from continuous improvement of learning performance, to use it as a prerequisite for summative assessment, for example, end of posting, end of module, or end of year assessment. The third option, apart from continuous improvement of learning performance, to use it as a component of summative assessment, again, in end of posting, end of module, or end of year assessment. However, there is an important question to ask. Do we wish to make continuous assessment a part of summative assessment? And if so, which part of continuous no, assessment no. should be included in summative assessment? The components of end of posting or end of module assessment and the use of logbook. End of posting assessment consists of written examinations, which may be a multiple choice questions, structured essay questions or modified essay questions, and clinical examination, which may be long case, short case, and OSCE, and marks are given for these assessments. Logbook assessment consists of case presentations during BST. Marks are given for this. 
Procedures performed, assisted, and observed. Again, marks are given for this. Cases clerk, marks are given for this. However, for professionalism, the assessment is satisfactory or unsatisfactory. And if it is unsatisfactory, then recommendation should be given whether remediation is required or a disciplinary action is required. End of posting or end of module assessment and role of logbook. There are two options. Logbook assessment can be included in end of posting assessment. For example, logbook carries 30% marks and remaining 70% marks come from end of posting examination. And with assessment of professionalism as a prerequisite to sit for end of posting or end of module examination. Logbook assessment can be used as a prerequisite for sitting in the end of posting uh, uh, examination. End of year assessment are a professional examination and use of end of posting or end of module assessment. There are two options. End of posting assessment can be included in end of year or professional assessment. For example, giving 30% marks to end of posting or end of module assessment and 70% to end of year or professional examination. In this case, it will not be mandatory for students to pass all the end of posting or end of module assessments. The second option, Passing all end of posting examinations can be a prerequisite for sitting in the end of year or professional examination. This means that all the marks would be coming from the professional examination or end of year examination. In this situation, it would be mandatory for students to pass all the end of posting or end of module assessments. However, there are some issues related to continuous assessment. In continuous assessment, the teacher and the student relationship has two roles, judgmental as well as facilitative, and this can create problems. Many complex issues may affect the tutor's judgment. For example, personal affinity may influence the tutor's option our opinion of a student. Subjectivity in assessment is a major issue. However, repeated continuous assessment during multiple postings will address this issue adequately. A standardized criterion-based assessment with good reliability is crucial to minimize inter-observer variation. Continuous assessment can it replace the summative assessment? There are three views. End of year, our professional examination is mandatory as the focus of assessment is different than end of posting examination. It may be conducted differently for students who pass all the postings or modules. Satisfactory completion of all course elements gives exemption from a conventional essay style written degree examination at the end of the final year. However, in this case, external examiners should be involved in end of posting examination. Third situation, the unsatisfactory end of posting results failing in one or more postings means to reappear in the year end examination. Now let's move on to our second part of uh, this webinar, which is logbook. Logbook is a verified record of the progression of the learner, documenting the acquisition of the requisite knowledge, skills, attitude, and our competencies uh, over a specific period of time. 
So it is important to realize that this is a verified record. So every record needs to be signed by some responsible person. And competencies here, we are talking about the interestable professional activities, which is basis of competency-based medical education. The rationale for logbook, a key aspect of competency-based medical curriculum is the emphasis on acquisition of competencies as a requisite for progression in the course. That is, interestable professional activities must be achieved before progression to the next level of training. Therefore, active learning process by the student and his or her achievement or competencies are predetermined tasks needs to be documented properly. A record of activities completed and competencies acquired is necessary to ensure that learner has attained the key competencies. The logbook forms an integral part of the formative and continuous assessment programs. Logbooks provide a clear setting of learning outcomes and give trainees and clinical teachers a quick overview of the requirements of training and an idea of the learning progress. Logbooks assist supervisor and trainees to see at one glance which learning outcomes have not yet been accomplished and to set a learning plan. Logbooks are especially useful if different sites are involved in the training to set a standard of training. Logbooks facilitate communication between the trainee and the clinical teacher. The analysis of logbooks can reveal weak points of training and can evaluate whether trainees have fulfilled the minimum requirement of training. Logbooks ensure consistent quality and educational standards in medical training. To implement in medical training successfully, logbooks have to be an integrated part of the curriculum and the daily routine on the ward and workplace uh, basis. Logbooks are used all over the world from undergraduate to postgraduate training in human, veterinary and dental medicine, nursing schools and pharmacy, either in paper or in electric format. There is a different and interesting situation in Germany where final year students can choose any of the designated hospital in the country for their training. To have a consistency and to guarantee a standardized minimum of clinical training over all faculties and hospitals chosen by the students, it is important to have a logbook. Therefore, using logbooks in clinical training is a statutory requirement in the final year of medical education of the German Medical Licensure Act. At the center of competency-based concept of interestable professional activities is the continuous monitoring and assessment of performance in relation to defined work units in the clinical and preclinical pre settings, hence the use of logbook. The principle of trust and entrustment requires the following three fundamental elements from students. Number one, integrity, that is the good intentions and honesty. Number two, reliability the ability to work consistently and predictably. Number three, sincerity. That is the recognition of the student's own boundaries 
and the willingness to ask for support timely. The large book need to capture all these elements to achieve its objective. In addition to continuous observation, the following types of targeted evaluations have been defined as the basis of entrustment decisions. Evaluation of working products, for example, admission forms, documentation of patient care, preparation of a treatment plan or a discharge letter, case-based uh, presentations or discussions involving presentations in inpatient wards and outpatient clinics, patients' handovers, practice observations, for example, ward rounds, patients admission interviews are history taking and clinical procedures. Records of assessment during posting or module, for example, mid posting assessment, bedside presentations, seminars, tutorials, and mini CLs can also include directly observed procedural skills. The examples in preclinical lab books include small group sessions, for example, PBL sessions, seminars, or tutorials, practical sessions in anatomy, histology, biochemistry, parasitology, microbiology, etc., progress tests, assignments, projects. Here is an example of a PBL assessment form, which has a number of components, including attendance and punctuality, willingness to contribute, reasoning skills, interest, attitude, communication skills, and presentation skills. The concept has shifted from the pure assessment of competency based on quantity of procedures towards the assessment of the qualitative overall impression, which is underpinned by continuous supervision and standardized observations. A continuous monitoring of student is necessary for quality management. Log books are valuable tool for training in clinical settings, especially when multiple sites are involved. What is the difference between logbook and portfolios? In contrast to portfolios, which focus on students' documentation and self-reflection of their learning activities, logbooks set clear learning outcomes and help to structure the learning process and to ease communication between student and the teacher. However, there is some overlap in documentation. Portfolio is a collection of learners' progression in tasks and competencies. A portfolio is an evidence of events documented in the logbook. It includes selected assignments, self-assessment, feedback, work-based and in-training formative assessments, reflections and learnings from planned activity in the curriculum, and photographs as an evidence. The maintenance of portfolio is desirable. If portfolio is not possible to be maintained, and an extra to logbook can be used for documenting details. The next, what is the difference between logbook and study guides? Study guides, of course, guide students how to learn by informing the learning outcomes of particular session or topic learning outcomes, relevant content for each learning outcome, method of learning and method of assessment, that is the curricular alignment. Study guides inform educational strategies and opportunities. 
Study guides are generally for the discipline, whereas log books are for a module or a posting. Here is an example of a page of a study guide. Now, based on the learning outcome, the contents are identified, and then the teaching learning methods are identified, and the methods of assessment are explained. This is a list of contents of a logbook, which is uh, uh, not exhaustive and can be modified according to the situation in different institutions. Similarly, organization of a logbook may be different in different institutions, and here are some examples which can be modified accordingly. The core topics included in the VS uh, in the uh, logbook, for example, VSD, and this is a table to record these activities, date, method of teaching learning, which can be a lecture, a tutorial, a seminar, a curriculum, uh, case-based learning, team-based learning, long case, short case, or self-directed learning. This is an example of a marked feed for presentations and its components include clarity of information, relevance of information, adequacy of information, explanation and answers to questions asked, preparation of presentation, for example, quality of slides, presentation skills, use of audiovisual facilities. Example of a long case marking sheet based on different components and the range of marks along with uh, the uh, final uh, impressions. Eligibility to sit for the end of posting exam and the role of uh, logbook. Here is an example. Full attendance, minimum more than 80%, and which involves ward activities, on-call teaching sessions, seminars, problem-solving sessions. Satisfactory completion of logbook. Performed at least 10 procedures as listed in the logbook. Witness or assist at least 10 procedures at as listed in the logbook, clocked at least 10 cases, minimum two bedside presentations, and satisfactory discipline and attitude. So these are some examples which can be modified according to the policy of the institution. The logbook for preclinical students, another example, in integrated curriculum, an integrated logbook can be used. For example, in CVS module, integrated sessions plus specific sections for contributing disciplines. It can have introductory components of the modules, for example, learning outcomes, glossary of teaching learning sessions, eligibility for end of module assessment, assessment methods, written and uh, OSPI, criteria for satisfactory performance. The integrated sessions may include PBL sessions, assignments, projects, early clini clinical exposure, personal and professional development and ethics, presentations and marking guides. The Logbook for preclinical students, the contributing disciplines may include physiology, which can mention about the teaching sessions and practical sessions, anatomy, again, practical sessions, gross anatomy and histology, biochemistry, pathology, pharmacology, microbiology, and epidemiology and community medicine projects and visits. 
whether logbooks are maintained subject wise or phase wise in print or in electronic format is left to the discretion of individual institutions. It is important that the logbooks reflect the spirit and purpose of competency-driven curriculum, capture and document the acquisition of chosen competencies and the progress of the student without being bulky and inefficient. Some common problems with uh, logbooks, trainees often evaluate logbooks as boring and repetitive or bureaucratic. Documentation can be faked by just collecting signature without performing the learning objectives. Experience and study show that logbooks are not always completed. In practice, However, the use, book, use of logbook is often deficient. Some studies have shown that logbooks do not improve clinical training and are not used for learning. Logbooks may be used inconsistently. Documentation do not always show achieved objectives and gaps. So it is our responsibility to take care of all these issues. Now coming to the process of preparing a logbook, the first important point in preparation of logbook is to identify the minimum standards. And to identify these minimum standards, the, we must involve all the stakeholders. Identify the minimum standards that student must achieve in the discipline at the specific stage of training, for example, in year three, and there must be must and know and nice to know areas. These areas may include knowledge, skills, attitude, can be given in form of topics, procedures, and behavior. As I mentioned earlier, involve all stakeholders in defining the standards, including the supervisors, mentors, and senior students. Their feedback can be very useful in improving the logbooks. One important point in including the procedures, for example, in a logbook, we must make sure that the hospitals are the institutions where students are going to learn, give the permission to perform those procedures. Basic science logbooks should involve relevant clinicians, for example, anatomy should consult surgeons while identifying their minimum standards. Milestones need to be given in logbook and a realistic time frame should be given for each milestone. For example, by first week of posting, our weekly goals, number of cases clerked, and procedures to be completed, and the requirements by the end of posting. Use of additional resources may be required if the minimum conditions are not seen and the, the technology is used uh, for this purpose. For example, certain conditions, students may not be able to see uh, during the posting. In that case, videos of those uh, conditions can be used to uh, explain the students about the illnesses. Opportunities must be available to meet the minimum requirements that is within the working hours. The specific goals, logbook content should be to the point and presented in a clear structure. Clear statements, for example, must clock three cases of pneumonia rather, saying, rather than saying adequate number of lower respiratory tract infection must assist in five deliveries. 
then we should know what does assist mean? What is minimum requirement to be met to be labeled as assist? And this can be explained by giving examples. Must see and describe five slides of malarial parasite with at least one of Plasmodium falciparum. The format or structure of logbook. A logbook is a com compromise between simplicity and comprehensiveness. Logbook should allow the fast collection of valid, relevant, and reliable data. Logbook should be convenient to carry around. Paper-based logbooks can be filled out easily, but are difficult to analyze and achieve. Paper-based logbooks should be pocket-sized and firm. Electronic logbooks simplify recording and analyzing data and allow more efficient data access. Monitoring of logbook is important as documentation in logbook is not reliable when not supervised. It has been reported that logbooks are often incomplete and flawed if there is no continuous monitoring. Supervisors need to review the logbook, for example, bi-weekly, depending on the duration of the module for fast information of requirement and potential learning gaps of their current trainees so as to plan the immediate remediation. Analysis of the logbooks should be used to improve the curriculum and to give timely feedback to trainees, faculty, and supervisors. Evaluate the contribution of supervisors and mentors to the learning processes and evaluate the grade and quality of supervision. This slide I have shown previously as well, that is eligibility to send to sit for end of posting examination, the attendance, satisfactory completion of logbook, performing the procedures, witnessing the procedures, clerking the cases, uh, BSD presentations, and satisfactory discipline. So end of posting assessment can be planned as this example. End of posting examination, 60% of total marks, 30% written paper, 30% clinical examination. Continuous assessment carrying 40% of the total marks, 20% coming from presentations such as bedside or problem solving sessions or seminars, case write ups carrying 15% mark, and report by supervisor. 5%, which is based on the attitude, discipline, teamwork, and repo with the nursing and other uh, staff and parents or patients. End of year professional uh, examination. Here is an example of distribution of marks. Continuous assessment, 30%, based on the end of posting, end of module presentations, End of year or professional examination, 70%. This ratio can be changed to 40, 60. Written 30%, which includes multiple choice questions, structured essay questions, modified essay questions, and clinical can carry 40%, including long case, short case, and post case. With that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, I would be happy to answer uh, any questions now. The questions in the chat box. So first question, should the formative assessment be done on the 
basis of marks. Uh, yes, the, the, as I mentioned, there are two components. If we are talking about professionalism, maybe it would be difficult to use marks for professionalism and that can be uh, assessed as satisfactory and unsatisfactory. The other components, because we are using a criterion based, so there has to be uh, some measure of, of the assessment and marks can be in one, one way. Uh, so I, I think the both marks and satisfactory and unsatisfactory components uh, can be used. The second, yeah, yeah, sorry, Doctor Aisha here, sir. Yes, yes, please. Yes, sir, sir, my my question is, okay, how can we incorporate? How can we replace the clinical portion in the preclinical years? How can it be replaced? And uh, I am very much interested. Okay, what what does community work mean? And what do the students do in the community work? Can it be incorporated into the pre-clinical years and to what extent? Uh, right. Now, uh, Dr. Aisha, it, uh, it is, uh, uh, depends if you are following uh, an integrated curriculum. In integrated curriculum, the early clinical exposure and the community component is part of so-called pre-clinical years. In fact, in uh, preclinical years, there are modules on, on, for example, ethics, as well as on um, uh, research methods and uh, uh, the, uh, some statistics about it. Because after that, when students go to clinical years, they are required to perform certain uh, research projects. Even in preclinical years, they uh, apart from early clinical exposure, they are brought to different communities, for example, in some schools, uh, uh, looking at uh, the re relevant issues. So it all depends upon what type of curriculum you are following. If you are uh, having integrated curriculum, then those things can be uh, included in the logbook. I hope that answered your question. Gee, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Good morning, sir. Uh, this is Professor Ramakrishna, who has worked with you in Malaysia. How are you? I'm from. Uh, I'm okay, sir. I am in uh, India right you. now. Sir, we used to have uh, yellow book and blue book. Right. And uh, the one is the log book, and the other is the other we used to use for what is that uh, instructions or something. Sorry, I can't can't share you the second part. That we, uh, one uh, one of that pocket book uh, is yellow, the other is a green one or blue one actually. Mm? Right. And uh, the one uh, one of uh, out of the two, one is a log book. Right. We used to evaluate uh, bedside presentations, seminars, and uh, all the presentations, everything actually. Right. And the other book used to contain the syllabus and uh, the instructions, actually. Uh, yeah. So that is for student guide. That is a student guide. Right? That is a student oh. guide. Uh, actually, yes. I, I was going through the recommendations by uh, Medical Council of India. And yes, uh, the one of the slides I presented based on that, that they they recognize the importance of logbook and portfolio and student guide separately. But they mm -hmm. said if it is difficult to maintain, then you can uh, use logbook. And uh, instead of having full portfolio, you can have some annexure to, to, to the logbook to compensate for, uh, uh, for the portfolio. But the yes. study guide is totally different thing. Mm. And that's what you, you are mentioning because study guide actually uh, tells the students how to learn and what exactly uh, they need to learn and how they would be assessed on that. That uh, portfolio book is uh, something, uh, the third one, sir, actually. Yeah, the portfolio, as I said, is that this is the student who collects uh, uh, not every, uh, uh, for example, project they do or every assignment they do, 
generally they would pick up their best one. Yes, sir. And they would include in their uh, portfolio. And then important would be to have a, a reflection. They are thinking about that and what they have learned and what they plan to do. So it, this is one is evidence that they have done these things, which can include photographs and videos as well. But importantly is that what they think they have learned from it and how they want to improve. So it, it, it's kind of self uh, uh, yeah. and, Is the individual self students own uh, this thing? Uh, that's right, but it is it is uh, uh, assessed by the supervisor. The supervisor would go through that because students may need some help in reflection. Yes, they, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so it, is, it so, is to be done on day wise on that day itself, sir. Or can it be done on a periodical basis or something? Uh, on, like on periodical basis, yes. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you, sir. Doc, uh, Dr. Fahad. Ji, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Alaikum. Sir, thank, thank you for explaining logbooks and, and continuous assessments. Uh, my question is, can you share any real experiences of moving from paper-based logbooks to e-logbooks? And what would be the real hurdles and challenges? And is it really worth it? Uh, okay. Now, what my experience is a kind of hybrid. That uh, there are certain things which are on... Uh, 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 electronic and there are some parts which are on uh, on paper uh, paper based that that's my my personal experience we used to have uh, first the uh, 100 percent uh, paper based but the availability of technology and the usefulness of it for example you uh, you record you have done some project and you have recorded a video and uh, you have some pictures uh, which show that the evidence that you have done that activity. And the, so those things can be in the electronic format. So you can have a paper-based logbook and at uh, relevant points, you can say that this evidence is available in, in the, the uh, electronic format. So, like video, video clipping, sir. Video yeah, clipping. like video clippings, etc. Uh, so we we can have actually a benefit of of the both. So that, that's that's my 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 experience in that. Thank you so much, sir. Right, Thank you. Uh, right, uh, Doctor Shantanu. Shantanu, yes. I hope I pronounced it right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Malik. It was wonderful listening to you and so clear, clearly you have actually okay, conveyed the message. And uh, as I have understood you that uh, you have spoken about three types of assessments, formative, summative, and uh, continuous assessment. That's right. As I understand the continuous assessment, primarily it would definitely be required for the formative assessment, but at the same time, uh, it can also contribute to summative assessment, as you have also explained. Right. Yeah, that okay. depends the, based on the policy. But yes, let, based let, on the policy, let, right. Uh, let me clear one point before we go further. Yeah. The, uh, the formative assessment and continuous assessment, uh, there are some, some elements which are common. But formative assessment is that you you do some tests, you do some quizzes periodically. Whereas continuous assessment is that you are observing the, the student. It's not necessarily you are conducting some tests on that. And uh, it uh, like formative assessment is periodic where continuous assessment of course is, is ongoing, uh, recording the student behavior and, and the they're, like we said, enthusiasm, punctuality, uh, those kind of things. Yes, yes, you are very right. And uh, we need to very carefully distinguish between the purpose and motive of either of them. Okay. That's Although they, uh, the, 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 uh, sometimes the methodology that is used for the assessment uh, will uh, subtle, in a subtle manner, it will differ. When you talk of formative assessment vis-a-vis, -vis, when you talk of a continuous assessment as a part of uh, which can contribute to summative. 
because yeah. here you are in, in continuous assessment for the summative, you are actually giving them scores, okay, which is will be helping in certifying. While in case of a true formative assessment model, it's, it's rather an attempt to actually help the learners until they reach a minimum standard. That's so it's right. not the question of, and there, in my opinion, it would not be wise to give them scores, <laughs> numerical scores, and publicly uh, declare that, but that because that can put off somebody who is a slow learner, that if I know that I have scored very poorly, then that can again, maybe a disincentive to my further learning. So what I usually practice that it is an one-to-one -one between the teacher and the student that yes, you are, your, your attempt is fine, but then it is not yet up to the minimum standard. So you have to further try to learn it and I am there to help you out. So that kind of approach. So I think the teachers and the assessors, they need to understand this better because unfortunately, even today, because most of us are the, uh, the teachers today, senior teachers, okay, they have, they, until and unless we change our attitude and change our mindset, there is a, there is an apprehension, there is a risk that we create the form, so-called formative assessment into yet another kind of, okay, uh, quantifying assessment uh, uh, or... Dr. Uh, Dr. Shantanu, I, I fully agree with you. In formative assessment, the feedback is on individual basis. Absolutely. So it's unless the, uh, you, you can have actually the both, you can have a general feedback on the common issues, which uh, most of the members would have, but then you would have uh, an individual feedback. But somehow you have to have some kind of measure, whether there are marks or whatever, so that you, you, uh, you can assess students on, on some measurement to give them feedback. But I fully agree with you that the informative assessment, the feedback has to be on individual and private basis and it need not to be made uh, public. Sir, can I add one yes. thing? Sir? And we, we actually use we actually use a binary kind of this thing that uh, uh, acceptable and not yet acceptable. Yeah, so something yeah, that, like that. that, that that's satisfactory, unsatisfactory. That's absolutely fine. That is the every individual's uh, 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 sorry every institution's policy as long as you have some criteria because this is criterion based. As long as you have absolutely. some criteria, so that that would be totally fine. Sir, can I add one thing, sir? Uh, prof, I have a question, Prof. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, first, Professor Zayal Islam. He has raised his hand. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Z uh, Dr. Alam. How are you? Fine. Uh, just one thing I want to add that in pre-clinical pre logbook area, we develop a structured practical journal of histology. And where the different topics are being structured according with question answer. Can we make it a part of a uh, logbook? Yeah, we, uh, basically, a logbook is a record of the activities. Uh, I, 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 I see it like this. Like, okay, after, let's say, I have passed the MBBS examination, with all the logbooks, I can see that what I have done over the years. So it is a recording of, of the activities with the uh, some comments from the supervisors, whether they were satisfactory or not. And if it is not satisfactory at first attempt, so was there anything done to, to improve on that? So they, there is no fixed, uh, uh, no, I, I gave an example, but every institution can decide which components uh, you need to include in the logbook. It's to, uh, totally your, your choice. Sir, I want to say one thing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Sir. Like uh, in uh, continuous assessment and also formative assessment are uh, most to be, they are supposed to be stressed more than uh, going to the summative, which is the final examination, where it is irreparable condition. It is an irreparable condition. So uh, in the formative assessment and continuous assessment, we can uh, repair the student 
or the repair the uh, whichever uh, whatever requirements are there on him we can make him uh, perfect and then send him to the summative assessment uh, so we actually, should start actually, more that, on that is the whole purpose that is the whole purpose that the, the continuous as the the reason you want to include in summative assessment is that sometimes students are not really very serious about it so, uh, prof, uh, so if you tell them that this would contribute to your summative assessment so they, they may be more attentive to that okay okay uh, thank prof, you i have a yeah professor kabi yes um Prof, uh, regarding the mark distribution of the uh, at the end of year or end of post in end of module, whatever you said, that the fragment of the or percentage of the mark from the summative assessment and from the continuous continuous assessment, I saw in some high tier university they emphasize on the continuous continuous assessment more and the summative assessment less. So, what's your comment on that? That uh, again, again, there is also some articles that uh, if the fraction from the continuous assessment is more and the less from the summative assessment, that there is a study without continuous assessment, most of the student uh, was failed. But addition, uh, when they add the continuous assessment marks, so the cumulative marks, they made them pass. Because the continuous assessment, it should be, you know, it should be judged and it should be recorded very standard way, which is uh, very tough to uh, follow up and uh, maintain the standardization. What's your comment on that? Okay, there, there are two points. One is that how much marks you want to give a continuous assessment, it uh, uh, depends upon the institution. The important point is that uh, to be fair uh, in continuous assessment is very, very important. Sometimes we are, uh, because of subjectivity, we are not very careful and we just uh, keep on signing the log books or giving the marks. So that is one important component. Second is the basically continuous assessment is supposed to assess the areas which are not included in annual examination. For example, teamwork, for example, professionalism, for example, the, the, the the, the, the behavior are, are, are medical ethics, medical ethics. Medical ethics. So basically, the focus is not exactly what is uh, based on in the annual examination, which is more on on uh, on knowledge. Hi, uh, Dr. Mona. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I'm, I'm very delighted to be among you today, um, and I want to con congratulate you, sir, for your um, uh, excellent uh, presentation. I have actually two questions uh, for you, sir. Um, the first one is, um, do, you sub the, do the students have to submit the log their logbooks uh, like uh, after each posting or at the end of the year or uh, before they graduate? Because I, I know that at some institutions, they um, used to um, let the students submit their logbooks um, at the end of the module or at the end of the rotation, the clinical rotation, I mean. And at some other institutions, they have a sort of a cumulative logbooks starting from year one until uh, the year of graduation. This is my first question. Uh, okay. Now, our, our local practice here is that we collect the logbook at the end of the posting. And uh, we, uh, but I don't think there is any universal ruling on that, that uh, whether you want to uh, uh, collect uh, uh, later because if you want to include uh, the lab book as a component of summative assessment at the end of the year, uh, so you, you can have a choice when you want to collect. Personally, I find it's good to have by the end of the, the posting because then students would try to complete it. Mm -hmm. But if students know that you are not going to see it uh, immediately, they may just leave it and they would say that we, we might do it uh, later. Okay. So, uh, so I think to 
the student being student, we, we have to do certain, uh, you know, uh, we take certain steps to, to get the things done properly. Okay, so, and by posting, by posting, you mean end of rotation, right? End of clinical yes, rotation. Yeah, that's right. All right. But, but All at right. the same time, at the same time, we request the supervisors to go through the logbook uh, at different intervals during the posting so that you you make sure that students are working on that. All right. Yes, sir. And, and, and my second question to you, sir, if I may, is uh, how long do you keep the, the logbooks of the students after they graduate? Uh, no, so basically it is the property of the student. So once we, we have taken the data, whatever we want to take, it is the property of the student. And I actually, uh, personally, I think this could be a, a good thing for students to keep. And years later, you can go through and enjoy going through that and see what you have been doing and how you have been, uh, you know, performing. So I think it's property of the student and it should be given that to them. The, logbook, the mm -hmm. logbook will be a record to be shown to the grandchildren and every one of the student itself, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice memory I, from their studies. I, yeah. Can I, I make I, a comment here? Yes, I, I have devised a method that in which uh, the logbook we have got a cadre like a assistant professor, associate professor, and all that. This assistant professor will review every week, associate professor will review every two weeks, and then uh, the professor, it will come to the uh, professor at uh, every one month, and uh, nearly at the end of the posting, it comes to the head of the department. Uh, well, we uh, actually we don't do that. That means a lot of work. So uh, basically, we leave it to the supervisor because during the posting, we divide the students among different supervisors, and they they take care of that. Okay. okay. I, I see, Can I make uh, a comment here, sir? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. I see Dr. Santano raising uh, her hand again. Yeah. So yeah. regarding this logbook, because it is a record of performance of the student. I, Right. So, in my view, it should be uh, in real time, it should be maintained, it should be recorded, or the documentation should be real time documentation. Absolutely. And right. then uh, this, this needs also to be countersigned by <clears throat> a concerned teacher. So, one of the challenges in a given uh, session, if, if there are, say, 150 students or 200 students, which is a norm now in most of the medical colleges in India, at least. So it is a huge work burden for the teachers also. But then I think there is a need for uh, dividing the students into groups uh, for the uh, teacher concerned. We can call it mentor. Each teacher could be a mentor of a group of, say, 15 or 20 students. And those 15 or 20 students should get their logbook regularly or periodically uh, checked and countersigned by the mentor. That's how you can actually see. Because if we allow them to just maintain by themselves and submit it at the end of the whole uh, uh, whole program of that particular subject or discipline. There is a possibility that uh, at the end they will try to copy it. Okay, but the whole purpose of maintaining the logbook will be lost. Okay. So that is the yeah, what I wanted I, to make. The, the the one thing is if you read the definition which I presented, it says it's a very tight record. So somebody has to sign it. Second, the suggestion you are doing, actually that's what we are practicing. We have supervisors and mentors who take care of these logbooks. Uh, I'm sure, can I ask you on yes, one okay. point? Yes. Yes, uh, regarding the, in the logbook, we have perceptions about uh, the respective posting like pediatrics or surgery or medicine like that. But uh, my question to you is, uh, what should be the the format for this perceptions of a particular posting, like a pediatric? Is it about the lecturers or is it about the content or something like that? So firstly, my question is, is there a format for the students to give regarding the perceptions of a particular posting? And number two, if it is of value, what is its value? And then how, if it is of value, then how do we uh, measure it or include like, for example, Prof, in, for year three, we give the logbook 5%. And then for year five, the final, we give 10% allocation for logbooks. So how much uh, 
will it, uh, will it accrue in that 5% or 10% log book? So I want the measurement right. uh, pertaining to this perceptions of a particular posting. Uh, prof, prof, so, so perception is actually part of portfolio. Yes, uh, but it, our undergraduate uh, so log books the, have had... You, you can have an exchange to the log book with the perception. Perception actually means is the the reflection on the part of the student. Yes. Of what, what did they see or how they feel during that posting. So exactly. For this, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether you really need to give marks for this perception and, and reflection. Okay. But the purpose is, so if supervisor goes through the reflection of the students and they realize that students uh, are raising some, let's say, uh, uh, real issues, uh, then they should be addressed. But mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, like, for example, student may think that he or she has been failed because the examiner doesn't like her. Oh. So in that case, uh, obviously, you need to help the student to, to, uh, to improve on their reflection. This, this is what actually happened with me. I'm, I'm sharing my own, own experience. Okay. That, uh, instead of uh, thinking the shortcoming of the personal shortcomings, sometimes we tend to blame others for that. Mm. Mm. So that is the main purpose of this perception or reflection. You are thinking to make a person realize that where is the problem and how to deal with that. And uh, it, it's not necessary to, to give marks for that. But the purpose okay. would be the, the really remediation part for that. Okay. But, but uh, can you clarify the content? They can say that Prof. Alam Shum uh, Malik is an excellent teacher or something like that. Is that uh, a format or is it uh, you taught them uh, something oh, like it, uh, it, it, uh, re a reproduction? Yeah, uh, you it, taught them genetics, it, so they uh, like the genetics. Uh, prof, prof. So, so that is a personal comment. I, I would be happy if student says that I'm an excellent teacher. I would thank, mm. you, uh, mm. thank them for this. But uh, mm. uh, the issue is the, what problems they are facing. Uh, but marks can be allocated only for actual procedures, not, okay. for, uh, not for perception. Okay. Uh, I want to clarify that. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Abida Shahi. Yes, Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Alam, as usual, for the excellent presentation. I am Dr. Abdul Shahin from Shifa College of Medicine, Islamabad. Uh, I would just like to add that uh, it's rightly highlighted that logbooks are real time uh, documentation of the academic progress of the students, and at the same time, they are students' property. Right. But at the institution level, someone pointed out that how much, how, how long the institution will keep the logbooks. But I think that at the institutional level, like electronic logbooks could be the best way for gauging the progress of the students and reflecting on our own curriculum and making amendments rightly. All right. And like if if like if we talk about the components of uh, 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 paper logbook, in students' logbook, the communication skills, punctuality, attendance, they could be of more importance. Right. But in electronic logbooks, there there should be mention of must pass competencies, which procedures are the most, which uh, in uh, preclinical sciences which skills are the most integral part that is more important for the institutional level and for the uh, for gauging the progress of the curriculum and okay. to reflect on the curriculum right. thank you if you if you would elaborate oh, that that at least yeah. both things go hand in hand thank you so much uh, yeah uh, i i think uh, uh, i i i agree uh, fully agree with with your views as i mentioned earlier that uh, actually combination of uh, Paper-based and electronic-based probably is is uh, best choice at the moment. Uh, and the, 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 like we said that basically this is a property of the student, and if the institution has used it for the purpose it was uh, meant for, then uh, the institution may like to keep it or may not like to keep it. I don't know whether there are some policies at the national level or medical council level that whether you need to keep a record of your students, th th those are different things. But um, uh, uh, I, I agree with you, this, the, 
a combination of um, electronic and the paper based would be probably the best option uh, to Professor, Professor Malik, I I have an issue here right. regarding the continuous assessment right. of uh, say 150 or 200 students in a batch. Right. We of course we need to distribute them to multiple teachers. Right. Now the question is how to standardize or how to harmonize or how to make it uniform because different teachers might have because of the subjective nature of right. uh, assessment, right. the students are at the receiving end right. and how to eliminate the kind of biases or kind of non-uniformity in assessment, particularly when you are talking of this is also going to add or going to supplement Right. the uh, performance in the summative assessment. Yeah. So no, how to address I, this I, issue, I, how to address I, this problem? I, I give you the example of, for example, problem-based learning sessions, right? So students are in, in problem-based learning sessions, there, there are maximum, let's say 10 students and there is a supervisor and there is a, a format. So that your point of uh, consistency uh, of, uh, of the assessment is of course very important. So the, what we do is that we have the guidelines, we have the marking uh, schemes and we have defined it. And the, the uh, mentors and teachers are, are familiar with it. So we try our best to minimize the subjectivity. Uh, you may not uh, be able to remove it 100%, but uh, with these standardized uh, marking schemes, and every standard being defined, uh, I think it can be a, uh, uh, you know, addressed to, to a great extent. Okay, yeah. right, got it, thank you. Yes, any, any other questions? Yeah, All right, if uh, no more question, I Thank you, everybody. But uh, thank you, sir. Thank as, you. As, as usual, I have to share two more slides uh, with you. Uh, the... Are you going to share your power? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And I my regards to Madam. I have to share uh, more slides uh, uh, with you. And as uh, usual, one is our next webinar would be on 23rd of January. And uh, this would be on curriculum mailing what, when, and why. Right? And uh, uh, Professor Dr. Ruksana would be conducting that. The next is. Uh, my usual appeal to all the participants to donate one USD or equivalent amount in your local currency to any deserving individual in your neighborhood or any public welfare organization in your community. Now, regarding the PowerPoint, we have already uh, shared uh, the PowerPoint, but if you have not received, I can send again. And we would also be sharing the video recording of that. I can see uh, Dr. Hoda has uh, raised her hand. Dr. Hoda? Can you hear me? Maybe it's right. Well, so with that, I, I thank you uh, for uh, your support. And uh, we will be sharing the video recording of this session by, by this evening, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much, sir. Thank you very much. Greetings from yes. Alexandria, Egypt. Thank, Thank you very Thank much. You, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Malik and everybody. Thank you, Thank very, you much, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam.